All right. Hey everyone, this is Erin from ErinFlynn.com and today I'm here with Cynthia from Digimorphs.com and we're going to talk about how to use Google Analytics as a web designer. Uh, thanks for joining us, Cynthia. How are you? Hey Erin, I'm great. I'm doing very well. <laughs> well thank, thank you again for basically doing this like a third time with us in order to get questions answered and uh, you know, let my audience, you know, learn about Google Analytics. So thank you. We've had a lot of webinar problems and you have stuck it out like a champ. <laughs> it's great. I, I could just keep doing this webinar. <laughs> it's just fun to talk. I like talking about this stuff, so. It is fun. And well, well I, I like chatting with you too. So at least, you know, we, uh, we can chat together and fingers yeah. crossed come up with the recording. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to um, kind of tell people who you are and what you do and kind of uh, give them a little introduction to yourself? Sure. So my name is Cynthia. I run Digimorphs.com and basically yeah, creatives and online entrepreneurs with their Google Analytics and their analytics in general, really, because Google Analytics is just a tool and there's lots of different analytics tools out there. And really my goal is to make uh, analytics a little bit more friendly, a little bit more approachable, and just integrate it into your ongoing process, you know, either monthly or quarterly, taking a look at your analytics and just bringing it together with intuition, with your creativity, you know, whatever uh, feels good with you. And just not, it doesn't have to be scary, you know, I guess that's like the biggest takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Well, I, I know that I certainly find it scary and overwhelming. Well, I'm less so now that I know you and have you to help out. <laughs> when I first started getting into it, it was just so overwhelming and so scary <laughs> to get into. It just seemed like an impossible task. And you've made that a lot simpler for me. So thank you. <laughs> That's good to hear. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> um, I guess for people who are not super familiar, maybe they're new to web design or maybe kind of just like new to getting into analytics, can you kind of explain what Google Analytics is and why it's important? Like, why is it something that we should be aware of? Sure. Yeah. So Google Analytics is a tool that tracks your basic um, kind of stats coming off the site. Um, so it actually started as a server counter, you know, the famous, the infamous, you know, little server counters that we have. That, those were, you know, our first analytic tools and the code sits in the head. So that's where we want it to fire off. Um, and it's just a snippet of code, right? So the tool itself has grown and changed over time. Um, and like we talked about before, uh, sometimes it looks, you know, it doesn't very, it doesn't look very user friendly and there's reasons for that. So, so yeah, the tool itself is important because I think it can help us make better decisions and, you know, it's free, uh, and when we make use of it, we can just get real hard facts about how people are visiting our website. And for web developers, I think that's important. I think that's why we want to build websites that are useful and that people are actually using, not just, you know, stuff that is supposedly working. So using a tool like Google Analytics as a web developer can just become it's a really great uh, extra kind of sword that you can use when you're talking to your clients and you're, trying to explain to them why you're recommending something or why you're not. Excellent. And I think um, when I started doing Google Analytics, kind of like with my web design, uh, kind of with you, and being able to see, you know, like how people are actually using those websites and make changes based on actual data as opposed to, I think they're clicking this. <laughs> it really makes a big difference in making a strategic and effective website for clients, uh, which is something that I really think is great. And it's something that, you know, you can charge more for also as a web designer because you're able to show um, how people are actually using things and how adjustments actually improve things like conversions, um, which kind of Absolutely. leads to the questions, should web designer be Google Analytics experts or not? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question. I guess it, 
it kind of depends on the web designer or the web developer. It's, it's up to you if you want to use that as like your niche or your your way of pitching and you like it. I think that's like the first question. Do you want to like do you are you kind of curious about it? Um, maybe you don't know you like it yet. You know, it's good to just try something. Maybe you're looking for a new way to shift your business. Sure. Uh, integrating Google Analytics as like something really good at is a great strategy. I think it's, it's makes you interesting and it's really an untapped market. Like, and it's good and bad, right? When you, when not that many people are using Google Analytics, there is like kind of an educational piece that, you know, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just telling people you need to be using this, but it, it can also, for some people it can be a struggle. Like maybe you don't want to, you know, have that conversation. You just want people to come to you. So I definitely think web developers need to have a basic knowledge of how, you know, how the code works or just where it's supposed to go and like the basics of it, the basic metrics and just get a sense of what a client might want. Uh, that would just be a great starting point for you and for the client. Right. So it's, it's really benefiting everybody in a way. So what would be a few things that you would recommend designers and developers specifically should know about Google Analytics? Like are there specific reports or like certain things that they should look at and understand um, in terms of that? Yeah, so I definitely recommend um, just understanding the four basic areas of Google, uh, Google Analytics reporting. So, you know, that's acquisition, behavior, um, I can't think of the other one conversion. And then there's one more. I can't think of it right now. Um, those four areas of reporting are super important for you to understand and to just get a sense of, um, it's going to help you just start to think, okay, what kind of reporting? Cause there's so many reports in the tool and that's the problem. We think we need to know all of them and that's just not the case. Uh, it's just, it's important to, understand the key ones right and then yeah in the admin section um you know in the in your unstoppable courses we have a workshop on goals that's also a really great um configuration that you can set up for a client to start a conversation about google analytics maybe you don't even need to tell the client because honestly when you set it up in the tool it's not like you're impacting the website you could just go ahead and like test it out and Set it up and you know tell the client about it later when you've got the reporting and see what they say you know kind of size them um that's a that could definitely be a big thing to set up in terms of tracking conversion track tracking an opt-in or tracking a service you can do that through what's called goals inside of google analytics yeah and that workshop was really great because i knew about goals before um but then when you contributed that workshop uh to the expedition i was like this is awesome because yeah. <laughs> i really want to do start like doing more goals so i set some up for clients um that i'm tracking right now to kind of see where we can make improvement but like um goals on getting people to uh, submit their contact form right uh, because the point like they get all of their inquiries through their contact form. And so that workshop has been really helpful, like even to me in just getting like, okay, here's like the step by step and how I get things set up. And then I just do it <laughs> and I do review it. Yeah. I have to go through it. Um, I think I went through it twice. Like the first time I watched it and I didn't do it. And then I went through it again, like as I was actually doing it and I'm like, Oh, this makes oh, so much great. more sense now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's funny how like we make it a big monster and I get it. It's, it's not, it's not pretty. I mean, I, I didn't study this stuff. I just, was going on. just having that attitude. I think all like web developers, attitude of like scrappy just figuring it out it's the same thing with google analytics you just have to be patient with it in a way <laughs> yes i think yeah most developers are like self-taught dig in there figure things out and google analytics is definitely seems like a similar similar mm -hmm. type thing which is why it's strange that we're so resistant to it <laughs> because you would think this would be something developers would be like okay let's figure this out we just rather type code all day i guess <laughs> I think the problem, I mean, we talked a little bit about this yesterday. I think the problem is that there's not a really good 
help resource, like directly from Google. There are lots of blog articles, but there's not, I feel like with code, there's just so many resources. It's, uh, it seems more accessible in a way. Google Analytics, it's still very underground, like, oh, hell, and you're like searching and searching and it's like written in like Chinese or something. It's just, it's difficult. Yeah, it, it can be really hard, but you, you actually, I know you have two courses already on Google Analytics and you're coming out with a third one though for web designers and developers, right? So that would be, yeah. can you tell us about that? Cause that seems like that'd be a good place to start for anybody who doesn't want to have to like read a totally different yeah. language to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. So I have a Google Analytics course. It's a beginner's course uh, specifically for web developers and the idea is it's a uh, month long. It's kind of like weekly lessons and it's just to help you. So I said it. But it's admin, but I also have a final component that's super specific to web developer uh, business um, about how to start presenting it to a client and how to integrate it into your own business. Right? So I show you, specific templates and worksheets to, you know, ask your client certain things. If you're looking to bring it into your services, what would you ask them? Uh, how would you basically get them to start listening to you in many ways, right? So um, I really wanted to make the course uh, just like hands-on and not just like this dry like Google Analytics thing. So. Um, I think the course is a great starting point, like you said, and there's so much more that can be done. Um, it's just starting somewhere, really. Awesome. So then on the flip side of that, if somebody does not want to use, like who does not want to learn Google Analytics, I mean, because I'm assuming a lot of people here probably do, like a lot of people here are going to watch this. But yeah. if they don't, if they're kind of more like me, where like the basics are good and then that's it, and then I want to hire you, <laughs> what <laughs> stage in a project is the best stage to pull in a Google Analytics expert like yourself to get started? Um. I think the, again, the question going back is it depends kind of what age the actual um, client is in, right? So if they're, or, or the type of project, I should say, if they're starting a new website, you could potentially uh, bring or, you know, do a setup or bring me in to do like, like set up and some of the like, spam or stuff like that. Um, that could be a stage. And then also if they're doing a redesign, that could be before the redesign, right? Because the ideal is you want to integrate everything you learn through the analytics and through the analysis um, into the redesign. So you're, you know, everything we do in analytics, it's not just like, oh, that's interesting. You actually want to action it. Like that's the interesting thing. Um, it's not just like looking at the static numbers and, you know, feeling bad because you had 50 visits this month, like who cares? Like just focus on your growth, right? And focus on the month to month. So, so yeah, the redesign is definitely a great place. Whenever the client or you're looking to shift your business could be a potentially interesting time because you can get a lot of ideas from the data. You can, the data could tell you what's working, what's not. Um, so you could use those as starting points brainstorming content or brainstorming a new marketing strategy. Uh, there's a lot you can do with it. Um, and it, that's all, yeah, it gets overwhelming. But again, it, instead of starting from the tool, actually starting from the client project, or if it's for your business, starting like, what's my goal here? And then turning to the tool with specific questions. I think that's a, um, a great order. Instead of looking to the tool, you know, just tell me, the tool is very broad and it doesn't give you any sort of direction of what you should be looking at. And that's not what, you know, not the reason it's not badly. Sorry. It's, I guess that's just the way that it was brought up. It was just kind of built on itself and, and well, it's our job to really navigate that and decide, okay, what am I, what do I want to do with this right now? Mm -hmm. 
So if I were to have a potential client coming up and so they've got their, their current website and it's ugly and I'm going to redo it. Um, <laughs> so as an example of this, would it be a good idea to go into Google analytics, like get it installed on their site if it's not already and set up a goal, for example, on their contact form and see what their conversion rates currently are and, you know, let that run for the month or whatever leading up to the project. And then once I do the redesign, you know, obviously the design has to be up for a little while, but then kind of compare and see if the goal is being completed more, if the conversions have gone. Is that a good example of how you would use that with a client? Yeah, I would definitely, like I said before, if you're doing a redesign, you want to get like a baseline of how things are working now. So I would set up like can meet goals like several whatever really the client's goal site so if they're service-based you want to see where people are purchasing their service if they're product-based the same thing if they're more of a content you know maybe you want to see how people are sharing things or anything that you can uh, track like on your site can be potentially tracked by Google Analytics right so um, yeah the Conform is a great example, but I would take it a step further if there is some sort of monetary exchange on the site and you can grab a hold of that. And then, yeah, when you do the redesign, you'll be able to, it's sometimes tricky to compare two completely different sites. Obviously, you're gonna, and obviously you want it to be better because you just created it, but in some cases, they're just going to be so different that it doesn't always make sense to compare, right? So be cautious with that, but I definitely think it's a great way to inform yourself of like what changes to you know serve the client and and take them closer to their goals. That's awesome. That's that's really good info. So hopefully anybody watching yeah. this or listening later will like start thinking about how to how to use Google Analytics that way. Uh, to make more effective client sites and, and look at what those yeah. goals are and establish those goals with the client before anything really starts happening with the design as well because you need to know what it is you're tracking and what the client's goal is. Like, why, why do they even have a website? <laughs> so Yeah, there's a whole process. Like, the, like I said before, the tool is actually quite cold. Like, it, it, there's a whole process that you need to do before, which I'm assuming you, sh you should be doing anyway with your client of like understanding what their real goal is for like, why do they have a website? Just ask that question. <laughs> they'll probably look at you like you're crazy or, you know, if they'll hear you and think you're crazy, but you need to be asking questions because you're never going to really know the site's never going to accomplish that if everybody's not aligned on that. And Google analytics is the same thing. Um, the other great thing you would use tool for potentially is that if you have an ongoing client and you feel like you want to resell them or upgrade something, Google Analytics can give you some ideas of where to do that. So maybe you have a client right now that doesn't really seem interested in like a redesign, like a big sort of design, but you want to pitch them something, but you have no idea what to do or like nothing seems really obvious. So you could go inside the tool and find something. I mean, if there's nothing, there's something, but it could be just one other area to look in. And if you do find something, you can pitch it to them with real data, right? With like real hard facts. And it's just so powerful, you know, just coming to the client with that. You're not just inventing something or they don't feel like you're trying to like make up something that doesn't exist. It's, it's real, right? So that can be another potential way in, in a, a web developer business to just generate work, right, for yourself. That is an awesome idea. I really, really like that. And um, I'm a big proponent of continuing to work with clients, like, after the initial work. Because, first of all, like, you already know that you like working with them. And obviously, you yeah. probably wouldn't continue to offer services to people that you don't <laughs> like working with. We all get a few of those. But if you liked working with them, why not keep working? And so I love the idea of using Google Analytics to kind of look for ways to improve their website and then therefore their business and yeah. almost becoming like a partner and like really helping them be successful because that's that's awesome. Like, I mean, to have that much of an impact on somebody's success and to uh, – you know, kind of have that kind of relationship with a client. I have a few clients like that and it's just, it's, it's like the best. And, you know, I love working with them. Like their email actually shows up in my inbox and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm excited, <laughs> which is, you That's know, 
not how we, how we always feel about clients. So I, I love the idea of um, paying yeah. attention to their Google Analytics um, for those kinds of updates. Because that's not like I look at like their overall presence, um, but I don't necessarily see all of the um, Google Analytics things. So I, I needed to pay more attention to that. Um, let's see. So we have some submitted questions, which I know we talked about in the live webinar yesterday, <laughs> but we're going to do them again so that people can actually hear the answers. <laughs> That's great. No, it's fine. It's, they're good questions. They're all really they are. Good. They're really good questions. Um, so I'll start at the top of the list. Tim asks, mm -hmm. is there any way to create a filter in native Google analytics that can be applied retroactively? Um, and do you, do you want to take it from there? <laughs> this is your yeah. Answer. <laughs> so, so in Google Analytics, there's two ways to filter your data. There's what's the filter inside the admin, which only works going for, so like Tim said, um, you set it up today and then you start filtering your data, you know, going forward. Um, then there's also a second way to filter your data, which is called segments, which are filters as well, but you know, Google likes to make up vocabulary. Um, and those are at the report level. So if you go to any report at the top, you'll see like a little blue donut and it says all users. That means that you're seeing all your data. Um, and on the right, you can click and actually create a segment or a filter to filter all your reporting. So once you set that up um, and you can filter off almost any um, value. So, Actually, if you click that, Google has a couple just pre ones, like there's one that filters out new visits, which can be interesting because you can analyze your new visits, like new visitors, let's say, who've just seen your site for the first time versus a returning visitor. Um, or I think there's another pre-made one that's like Facebook visits. And that can do that. So segments let you actively apply the filter and so that will filter all your data in the history of, of your account. Awesome. Very cool. So Tim's other question um, was very often when my firm takes over the SEO for a new client company, they already have Google Analytics or GTM account set up for both, but they've lost the Google account credentials needed to access those accounts. What is the best way to regain access to those accounts on behalf of the client? Yeah, so I feel your pain here. Um, I, it's just so frustrating when you lose access to a free tool because unfortunately it just there isn't that many people around to like listen to you. Um, so what I recommend, it's kind of like a back end way of doing this, but I actually recommend opening up an AdWords account. Even if the client doesn't have AdWords or you don't have AdWords, you don't need to put a credit card or anything for an AdWords account, but you register your AdWords account and go through their customer service and just tell them I've lost access. And that might be a better way of just regaining that. Um, and then obviously once you do have access, just putting in place just the best practice of the client always being the owner of the property in Google analytics and you will still be able to do everything. But you, even if you're setting something up for just always add them in the use cause you never know. And it's always good to have two people on there. Um, you know, even if they have no idea what, the, what Google analytics, you know, if it's even set up, just having them on there as an admin is, is a good practice. Awesome. So the follow-up question to that was actually mine, which was, can you remove yourself from a client's Google Analytics account if you don't want to work with that client anymore or for any other reason? <laughs> yeah, you can. Well, we, we looked it up yesterday. We can. Yeah, you can remove. Although, yeah, I, I get it. I guess it's just, it's like, whatever. <laughs> like, who? And remove you. They can remove you. You can remove you. Yeah, people can be removed. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, so sometimes you know you just you're done. <laughs> you you want to cut all the cords. <laughs> well, sometimes I feel like as, as you know a web designer, and not that 
you know, um, like you just don't always want the clutter of all of your clients stuff, especially like as yeah. you have things like, can you set up accounts for people and on and on. It's like every time you go into Google analytics, do you want to see 50 other Google analytics accounts? Yeah. Maybe not. So especially if they're a client that you haven't worked with in, you know, like two years or something, um, might be worthwhile just to, you know, remove yourself and clean it off. Even if it was a good relationship, maybe it just, you know, it's, it's not a returning relationship and it's just not going to, you know, work out. So yeah. why see their Google Analytics every time you log in? <laughs> so You're right. Yourself. You're right. It's like hearing the, the subconscious of the brain. <laughs> um, Teresa had asked, what plugins do you recommend to add Google Analytics to a website or do you? Okay, good question. So yeah, for WordPress, what I recommend is instead of using a Google Analytics plugin, which there are some ones that work out there, I'm sure the majority work, I recommend you use a header footer injection plugin. The reason I recommend that is because the code that's in Google Analytics that you can copy and paste from the admin area is the latest and greatest code that Google has. Missed. And we know that for sure because it's coming directly for us. Now, if you use a plugin, you can't be sure of that because they're executing their own code. You could probably even check what they're executing. But I think it's just nice to have more control over the code. And then the other reason is I've seen some plugins don't get fired directly in the header. So like I mentioned before, it needs to happen in the header section. And if it's not happening there, you can lose data. I've seen, you know, multiple requests. I've seen a bunch of things. And with the header code, it just seems like a little bit more direct. <laughs> Um, and in Squarespace, again, it's the same thing. There's like an option to inject code in the header through, I think it's like advanced configurations. Um, it's pretty simple. I recommend doing that instead of Squarespace also has like a Google analytics, like setup. Don't use that one. Cause it's old. It's, it's like an old code and why, why, you know, why <laughs> better to have a new version <laughs> yes um awesome so um i i guess then the the question i guess as a follow-up to that which i didn't think about yesterday was um if you though do have clients who want to see because i know a lot of people or a lot of designers install google analytics on the wordpress dashboard because their clients actually log in there but they don't log yeah. into google analytics would you then just recommend like setting up a report to be sent to them weekly or monthly or something instead um if they're if you know they're not going to go into their google analytics account because i think a, the reason a lot of us use those plugins mm -hmm. is just to the stat show on the dashboard not necessarily <laughs> any other reason. i never thought of that but yeah that makes sense um although i don't trust those dashboards either just a word of i've heard like i mean in theory They're slow to update I, I have noticed like my google analytics will be more updated than what's showing on my wordpress dashboard when i've used those before so yeah yeah, I mean, in theory, everything should be working correctly, but it's just like one other gateway that the data has to go through. Why not? Yeah, just get it directly. So yeah, you can definitely set up a dashboard and just have recurring emails and you can set it as a PDF. You can send it like in any file format, basically. Um, there's also a new tool that Google came out that's only available in the US. It's called Data Studio. And if you are into data and you're into reporting, that could be another prettier option that Google is now giving us for data visualization. Uh, I've played around with it a little bit and it's, it's not, uh, you do need to like study it a little. It's not just like super easy, but it's like drag and drop and you basically have all access to your Google analytics data and it lets you create like, way nicer reports than the basic stuff that you have inside of um, Google Analytics. But yeah, if you're starting out just like doing some reportlets and like putting in, them in there and then just sending it to your client, it's, I think it's like a good, good solution in the meantime. Awesome. Yeah. And I actually, I, I set that up for some of my clients now and I just emails them. I don't even have to worry about it. It just sends it to them. And uh, on some of the clients I do maintenance for, I get a copy of it as well. So I can kind of track, 
you know, mm -hmm. like what's going on on their website. But I, I love it. I just like send it and they're like, oh, look, Aaron sent me. They think I'm doing more work than I am. <laughs> and it goes automatically. So it's kind of a nice little feature. Um, but that's a good trick. Well, as, <laughs> as a added benefit to that is like sometimes they'll reply to that and they'll say, oh, by the way, like, can I hire you to do like this other thing? Because mm -hmm. it's shown up as an email uh, to them. And so it's just easy for them to hit reply. So it's actually led to right. more work. So just a little tip yeah. there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, the, more you, too. the more you can be in touch with your client and show them the value of what you do, the better, right? And you're just kind of always showing up. They're like, oh, she's super helpful. Yeah, it's, it's actually been a really nice added benefit. <laughs> um, we have two more questions. Leslie had asked, do you need to set up a new Google Analytics account if you change from HTTP to HTTPS, so like with an SSL certificate? I'm pretty sure you don't. As long as the domain remains the same and you're executing the code in the same way on the secure site, it should work. But I do recommend testing. Um, that's, I mean, that you should be doing that anyway. But yeah, like definitely testing when you go from the secure to, to non-secure and vice versa. But yeah, SSL work. certificates can sometimes do a little, like even even though like in theory, a lot of things should work. I have installed a few and sometimes you're like, why does this one random thing just not work? And you right. have to make a little tweak. Um, because SSL, sometimes it's just weird, but I think that now that we're going more SSL, like all the time, um, it's just going to become normal to, you know, have things set up that way from the get go. And yeah. uh, it won't even be an issue in a few years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, Mina had asked, what is a good or a bad bounce rate? And just kind of in general. Oh, the infamous bounce rate. Um, so yeah, bounce rate is a great metric and it's something that's a little bit more advanced in a way. Um, but I think it's great. Like if you've already looked at the, the kind of, uh, you know, page views, visitors, and looking at bounce rate is like a step in a nice direction of answering more deep questions, right? Or deeper questions. So um, a bounce rate there, I, do, I really don't believe there's like a good or bad bounce rate. It kind of depends on the page. So there's some pages that you want a low bounce rate. Well, let's start with what a bounce is just for those of you who don't know what a bounce is. So a bounce is someone who comes to our site, um, and it's the first page of the visit. So they load our homepage or a blog uh, article that we shared. They load that first page. They maybe interact with it, but not that much. And then they leave. So Google actually tracks if people like click and interact a little bit more. But a bounce is basically someone who lands and then leaves. So they bounce, right? The, the visual idea is clear. Um, so it talks about that specific page, like the stickiness of that page. Um, if, if we're getting people to stay and click on to other areas of our site, like I said before, some pages might have um, a low bounce rate and some pages might have a high bounce rate and that might be good. For example, a sales page. We send people directly to sales page when we're promoting something and then they click away from our site. They go to a shopping cart or they go to PayPal. That's a bounce. In Google Analytics size, that's a bounce. Even though to us it might seem, well, no, but they're still interacting with me. Um, Google Analytics only tracks one domain, right? So that's important to keep in mind. Um, so on a landing page or on a sales page, I should say, a high bounce rate might be the best thing that ever happens to you. That means that actually purchasing and they're not clicking back to your about page or they're not clicking, you know, sometimes on the sales page at the bottom, we have other links in case just to keep people there. Um, you know, we want people to go and purchase. It could also mean that people are closing that page, but in general on a sales page, a high bounce rate. Might be. So the opposite is true for, you know, blog content. You know, we want people after they read our content or after they interact with, a part of our services page, we want them to stick around. We want them to go to our about page to look at our testimonials, to maybe go back to our homepage to reread things. Um, so I think it just, it really depends on the site, 
the industry standard of what people say is 40% is what we're aiming for, for again, page, blog content pages that we want people to stick around. But it just really depends on the site. It, it depends on how much traffic you're bringing in. So instead of focusing on one fixed number, what I recommend is looking at this month's bounce rate, for example, on your homepage. And then looking at last month's and then looking at the, months bef the month before that. And looking at the trend. So see if things went up, went down. And start to build a picture. You know, what did you do last month if it's lower? What did you do on that specific page? Did you make any changes? Um, what did you do the previous month? And what can you experiment the next month and again, analyze the bounce rate. And instead of like worrying that your bounce rate is 70% or 90%, just put a goal of lowering it if you want to lower it. Uh, you know, 5% in the next three months or in the next month, depending on what you're doing. I think that's just um, more, a more uh, achievable goal than like everybody freaking out that their bounce rate is 60 and they want it to be 40. It's just it's not going to happen like that. I think it's kind of like losing weight or something like you like want to like, you know, be at a certain weight now and it's just not healthy. It's not going to happen. And you're probably not going to be able to sustain it either. Right. Um, the other thing is I don't recommend looking at your overall site bounce rate. Like I said before, this is an average and it doesn't make sense because you might have some pages that have bounce rate and they're going to tip off that average. So I do recommend looking at the individual pages and being really specific about the questions um, and how you approach each page. So the goal of your home page is really different than the goal of your content page, you know, and looking at the specific things that you're doing to get people to click and continue interacting on your site. Awesome. That is such good info. And it actually, it made me think of a question. <laughs> so sorry. Throw another one at you. Um, you said that, that bounce rates, um, or like the Google analytics only tracks one domain. So what happens if it's a subdomain? So if I have a sales page on AaronFlynn.com and it goes to my teachable site, which is going to be like unstoppable.aaronflynn.com as a subdomain, can it then track or because that's a totally different platform, different site, like what, what happens? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think subdomains are okay as long as the root domain is the same. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's like my answer to everything. Uh, but yeah, like it's the, it's the root domain that they, it looks at. And obviously if you have code on the site, um, it's kind of like looking at those two things. So if you don't have code on your site and you just put the domain in the admin, it will track really basic metrics for you, which is kind of freaky. But um, yeah, definitely just, um, just trying to stick to, I actually think you can declare more than one domain inside of Google Analytics in terms of subdomains. Um, but, but yeah, I don't more than one domain, like if they're completely two completely different domains, then you need two different, um, Google analytics accounts. There is a cross domain solution, but at this stage, like for beginners, I don't really recommend it. It's, it's like a lot of effort and it might not be worth it for what we're doing here. Yeah, I know you and I had talked about that before because I was hosting my courses on a totally different domain and you're like, Aaron, it's so much easier if you put it on one. And I'm like, <laughs> so, but now they will be on a subdomain. So I will, I will also experiment with that and I will see how that goes. And, yeah. Uh, let me tracking know. And uh, let keep me, you posted you know. and ask you when I make a mistake. What I'm doing yeah. Wrong. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much for making this happen and doing this interview. I hope that everybody listening and watching later has gotten lots of good information from it. Yeah. Um, where, where can they find you if they want to learn more about Google analytics and more about what you do? So you can go to digimorphs.com. And so there I have information about my courses and I have um, a podcast as well. And I really just like to nerd out on Google analytics. Um, and I love uh, going on Instagram. You know, I'm really having a good time on there. Um, have you heard of guys and coffee or men and coffee? No, <laughs> like, what's that? 
It's a really good feed of like men and coffee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that up. So, so Instagram's fun and uh, uh, without the S. Uh, but if you go to my website, you can you can see my Instagram as well. Um, yeah, and those are kind of the two places I hang out the most. Awesome. Well, thank you again. And uh, thanks for everybody for tuning in. Thank you.